Okay, I'm going to show you guys how to get started making a digital gradient scratch art project. And this is the picture I saw that kind of gave me the idea. It was shared by another art teacher in one of um, the Facebook groups where we support each other. And somebody suggested that instead of erasing through the black layer to let the gradient show through, that they use a layer mask. So since we've been trying to learn a little bit more about the proper way to use that, it seems like a great opportunity. I want to show you a couple other examples of traditional scratch art really quickly. So here's an owl that's really nice. They've cropped it close so you focus just on the face. And I want you to notice all of the different directions that the lines go and also the different lengths. So that helps um, create the correct texture for that particular animal. Here's another one that's really nice with a giraffe. We've got lots of short overlapping lines for the shorter hairs on the face, but then there's longer hairs going out to form um, the hair on the back of the neck. There's also parts where there's darks left and then closer together for more light. So it's kind of hatching and a little bit of cross hatching. Um, here's a digital one that was a dog that's just really cute. It's very similar to what we're doing, only we're going to have a gradient showing through instead of white. So you're going to choose an animal, and I decided to use a raccoon. So you can either do a website like pixabay.com, or you can use your search tools on Google, and you need to select large for your size, and under usage rights, creative commons, and that tells you that any of these pictures that pop up, you have permission to use. So just to be on the safe side, use those search tools. Here's the raccoon that I selected, so I've gone ahead and copied it. Now I'm going to switch to Photoshop. You'll see the panda that I did yesterday. We'll come back to that in a little bit. I'm going to make a new document with either Control-N or File New. And I'm going to change my pixels to inches. I want this to be 14 inches wide and 11 inches tall with a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. That way, if we decide to print it, we have a good quality image. So I'm going to create that, and I'm going to paste in my raccoon, and I'm going to resize it because I'm deciding what I want the composition to be like. I'm going to do Control-T for free transform, and I want you to remember that in the newer version of Photoshop in 2020, um, you do not hold down the Shift key to lock in the proportions when you resize something. So I am going to get this so it's close up, focused on the face, because I just really love that, um, that little expression on its face. And I think that's pretty good. So I applied that. Now I'm going to hide it temporarily, and I'm going to come and work on my gradient. In the older version of Photoshop, if you're using CS2 on your computer, um, you will select your two colors that you want to use for your gradient down below where it starts black and white. You'll choose what the colors are that you want to use. And then it will give you gradients based on that. There are also some that are built in. So G is your shortcut for the gradient tool. It may be hidden behind your paint bucket. So if you don't see it, just right click the paint bucket and look at that. So if you go to basics at the top, that shows you the gradient colors that you started with. And you can definitely do that. There are the options here um, for the different patterns of the gradient. So I'm just going to pick one. I think I'm going to start with this circle. And you just click where you want the center of the circle to be and drag it out. If, for example, you want it to be the other way around, just toggle to flip your colors and then it goes the other way. So you can definitely start with that if you want to. Um, if you want to customize it more, you can switch to where it's just the one color that goes to transparent. And then it will let you start kind of layering in and it won't cover up what you already did completely. It'll just kind of add to it. So you can add as many colors as you want. You can think about, um, you know, the different styles of gradients. Some are more straight lines. Some um, have one color that then repeats to the other. So you can play around with that until you have an arrangement that you like. You also can look at the built-in ones, which in 2020, they're organized kind of by color families. So you have those options that you can explore as well. Um, some are more vibrant than others, but you, know, you have some options there 
if you want to. You just want to pick something that's going to show up and really stand out against the black. So I think I'm going to start with this for now. I can always come back later and change that if I want to because we're working in layers. Uh, so it's time to make a new layer now. I can either do shift control N or I can go to the top of my layer panel. In 2020, it's a group of three horizontal lines and CS2, it's a circle with a triangle inside and I'm going to make a new layer. I'm just gonna call this my uh, layer mask. That's where it's gonna be built. So I want to paint this black. For now, I'm gonna switch to my paint bucket tool. I'm going to switch my colors back to black and white. So my gradient is still there. It's just hidden behind that layer. And I'm going to add a layer mask. So that is the icon that looks like a rectangle with a dark circle in the middle. And now when I start to paint, while that layer mask is selected, and you can tell because it has brackets in the corners, um, I'm going to paint black on my layer mask and that is basically um, blocking the layer and showing through what's underneath. So because I want to do it in a strategic way that's going to create my image, I'm going to make my raccoon visible again, and I'm gonna turn the opacity down to about 50%. So I, whoops, wrong layer. I'm gonna select my raccoon layer, and I'm gonna turn that layer's opacity down to about 50%. So I can still see it, but I will be able to see what I'm doing behind it. Now you can do this just with your mouse or we're actually going to use our graphics tablets that we have available. So it has one side that plugs the stylus in. And since I'm right-handed, I try to plug that in on the right side. And then on the left side, it plugs to the computer. And this is what allows it to work. So the biggest thing to get used to with a graphics tablet is that you don't scroll. I kept thinking I needed to at first, but you just move your hand, you just kind of hover, and then it starts to work. So you can look at the different brush sizes. I want something with um, the hardness all the way at 100%, and I also want something that's going to be pressurized. So you can see it says hard round pressure size. That means if I press lightly, I have really light lines. If I press harder, I get a thick line. So that's how the pressure sensitivity works. But I'm going to go now and I'm going to select my layer mask layer and I'm going to click the white rectangle that shows me the layer mask is selected. And now I'm going to start um, anything that I want to be a lighter value, I'm gonna start to brush that in. So I'm gonna do shorter, Border marks. That does not look right. Okay, it's right. It just is a light spot there. <laughs> I'm going to do shorter marks where I see it shorter, longer where I see it's longer. Oh, I know why it doesn't look right because I have the raccoon on top. So that's why I <laughs> forgot what I was telling you guys. That's why it might. Um, look a little bit different than you expected at first because you still have the raccoon or whatever animal you choose layer on top. So I'm following the direction of the lines that I see in the fur. By the way, you don't have to choose an animal with fur. It's probably the easiest to. Um, you just have to think about the different types of shapes if you choose a, an animal that's not a mammal. And even if you choose an animal with a lot of black, you're going to have to look for highlights so that you can see where things go. So here, I don't want this edge to disappear. So I'm going to add some smaller. There are a little bit of some white spots through here, but they're definitely not as dense um, or as thick as in the other spots. So I still want that to show up. I'm still looking at the angles. I'm just paying attention and taking it slow. So it's important you're not scribbling, you're making individual lines. That's what's going to give you the cool look of hatching or cross hatching. Um, if I just went like this, 
and just scribbled it in. It doesn't look very good in the end. So we do want to take the time to make individual lines and you'll get used to the movement. So it really doesn't take all that long. You just have to practice a little bit. And if you practice and you really don't like it, just make a new layer mask and start over. It's not a huge deal. I think this is a good time to save my progress since I haven't done that yet. So I'm gonna save to my computer. And I'm just gonna call it raccoon. For now. All right, so let's just continue on here. When I, I'm going to do a little bit more on the face and then I'll stop because I think you guys will be able to understand. So on the nose, it's black, but I see highlights. So I'm going to follow along to get the highlights. I see there's some little texture kind of dots around there. You can make very short, very, very short hatch marks that will kind of um, create that texture. And then down here at the bottom to show this edge, I wanna make sure I come out away from it. So I'm not tracing the shape, but I am indicating the edge by having controlled short little hash marks. And then as I get down here, it's a little bit more spread out. And when it's time to do the whiskers, I want to get nice, long, nice, long whiskers. And I can maybe change the size of my brush. I like the 47 uh, pixels for most of what I'm doing. But I think I want to make it skinnier. because I'm going to probably press a little bit harder just to make it show up. And I didn't want it to be too dark. Okay, so something like that works pretty good for the whiskers. Noticing how many there are and how layered they are. Just letting that overlap my other lines. It's just fine. Uh, I want to come back and look at the eyes here real quick. So for the highlights on the eyes, you may end up making it more solid. Um, I want it to be round, so I'm going to come back and cross over and do some round lines. And then I see I want to get the eyelid there. So the animals on an eye or a person and uh, the eyes are always really important. They say they're the window to the soul. And you definitely want to make sure that they are clear and um, easy to see and expressive in your picture. Let's hide the raccoon layer so you can see it's starting to starting to get there. I'm going to stop the share for now and do some more work and then I'll be back. All right, I am just about finished with this raccoon. So I am going to test it by hiding my top layer. And that shows the gradient that's underneath. And I think that looks pretty good. Um, now, if I had chosen a photo that showed the raccoon's tail, it may be more recognizable to other people, but I think it does look like uh, has enough detail to look like the photo. I'm going to come back and show you the panda that I did yesterday. So on that one, I added a little bit more of the background detail. And since for the first example, I wanted to choose an animal that had big sections of black, um, I have more empty space here, more negative space. So I just added some lines to kind of indicate the curve where I saw a little bit of a highlight to show um, the top of this part of the leg. and um, the edge of the ear here but yeah i kept it a little bit more black and white um so keep that in mind which style you like better as you're choosing your animal and that will help you decide um, kind of which direction to go so now that i'm finished i'm going to save it file save as i'm going to save it with my name and raccoon my name and scratch art um, so that way when you turn it into classroom, I won't get confused and then change it from Photoshop document to JPEG. 
pay attention to where I save it. I have it in the documents folder. Save and I am good to go.